Good afternoon, everybody. I'm sorry for not being there. I hope you all enjoyed by. My intervention is entitled Artivism and Interculturality in Jabahood Aesthetic and Reception. It's my first one in English, so please pardon my accent. Uh, I'll first try to define artivism. Artivism is a new concept created by Lemoine and Wardy in 2010. Excuse me. It's a dissenting oppositional and counter hegemonic micropolitic. In Tunisia, artivism can be linked to urban spaces. Uh, it first started in 2007 with Dream City, which was um, a urban, an urban exploration of the urban space in the, in the capital, in the old uh, city of La Medina. Uh, it opened the way to new artistic experiences and helped Tunisian citizens to use their right to occupy the city space. But what's, especially what's Jerbahud? Jerbahud is, is a street art exhibition created by Mehdi Ben Sheikh, a Franco Tunisian gallery owner in Paris. After his street art exhibition, La Tour Paris 13, in 2013, he met the Tunisian ambassador in Paris, told him his idea of, an, of a street art project in Tunisia. Adafri then helped Ben Sheikh, relieving him from the administrative difficulties. Before 2011, Uh, before 2011's revolution, Tunisian artists couldn't get help from diplomats or politics without impacting their own reputation, but this encounter was the beginning of a new phase. We can ask, what was the aesthetical ambition of Ben Sheikh, and did he fulfill it? Uh, Jerbaud aesthetic. There are three main points we can recall. First, Jerbaud had to be um, a part of the local community's life, calling sense of beauty and emotiveness. Uh, in, in Tunisian, uh, in Tunisian people, and especially uh, Jerbaud people. And then it had to search for, help the artists to search for universality. Mobilizing personal experiences, sensitiveness, and perceptions. And then it had to help public gain maturity, experiencing other cultures, and reconnecting with uh, cultural legacy, histories, and values. Urban artivism can be defined as the main purpose of Jerbahud project. Ben Sheikh defines Jerbahud as a laboratory of contemporary and international creativity. It's a participative project in the cultural awakening of the country as a whole, right before the first presidential elections. It's an exhibition destined to be more or less permanent approximating to the conditions of a museum while respecting the, f the specific character of the movement and the island's car cultural characteristics. In this sense, the ancient and popular quarter of Ariad, Al-Hara, was chosen for its unique territorial scenography. Why Ariad, Al-Hara? Because it's the symbol of the Tunisian open-mindedness. It's a kilometer away from the, the Laghriba, literally the stranger. It's one of the most, one of the oldest synagogues in the world. There are also two mosques and four other synagogues. Uh, Ariad has the air of a town, where time has stopped in the 60s, when Jewish Tunisians had to move to Europe and Palestine. There is an economy of space in the quarter, 
30 small shops around the central square, 4 main streets and many small ones radiating from the heart of the village. And of course, the colors and the shapes, white walls, blue doors, pure lines and fluid forms inherited from the Ibadist, Ibadist uh, architecture, one of Islam's oldest schools, call, calling for ascetism and openness. Riyadh is the ideal museum to turn the spotlight onto a particularly rich architectural heritage. How did Jarbahu transform Ariadh? Ariadh becoming the hood. S uh, the central square de um, was seen by Ben Sheikh as aesthetically self sufficient and remained untouched. Th in the streets, artists had to negotiate compromises between what they wanted to do and what the owners wanted to see on their house's walls. Patterns in the marketplace, um, on the on the streets, uh, and on the arcades. Then the office helped artists exploring abundant buildings in the countryside around Jerba, mostly very old abundant houses. Manzel, uh, the hood is. Initially, Rodolf Centurino's installation in a former slaughterhouse. It's an homage to the underground creation. It resumes the team's culture, freedom, and background. Finally, it names the, the, um, the exhibition, linking it to the popular culture, to, to universal popular culture. There is a synonymy between area. Al Hara is a hood. That's why the periphery's reappropriation has to name the exhibition. How does the theoretical aesthetic, this theoretical aesthetic, this scenography apply in the practice? What are the main lines actually emerging from the practical project? We'll try to draw two graffiti's general categories. From calligraphy to world culture. The calligraphy unifies heritage and modernity. Calligraphy is the artistic writing in the Arab culture. It offers the freedom to create non-figurative shapes, to search for beauty in the abstraction. Calligraphy is a participative palimpsest for Zefa and a reflection about freedom for Rasma, 3ZS, Al Cid, Shuf, Az, Inkman, and Kulkur. The Arab scriptural tradition is transposed in a public and open approach with modern materials and mediums. The calligraphy is aesthetically innovative. It's a philosophical reclamation of the tradition associated with religion. Calligraphy can be contrasted with other figurative or non-figurative graffitis. It's very close to the pattern used in the Arab tradition. This pattern used by ad fuel in the marketplace but it's very different from uh, the contemplative aphorisms of Chunhart, the geisha of Tuun, the traditional warrior face of Wise II, or Mahmoud Darwish, drawn by Yazan Halwani. The cultural references are so various that they finally harmonize completely. There is an exploration now that can be made out of social and economic effects. We will try to move soon to the island to meet people because our online survey isn't actually convincing. Reception in the post-11 context consists of studying the media exposure and reactions from people who have been on the spot in the exhibition. So um, we, can, we can say that our survey had 150 reactions 
80% were women, 73% have visited Jerba, 64% have seen the exhibition, and 65% liked the exhibition very much. On Google Trend, Jerba Hood reaches a first peak on July 2014. It corresponds with Jerba Hood's first peak in the five past years on July and August 2014. This peak lowered drastically in 2011. We can say that more visitors are attracted to the island thanks to the exhibition. To sum up, I would like to make two final points. The urban space the urban space's reappropriation is being discussed, along with the renewal of freedom of speech and creation in North Africa and especially in Tunisia. I think also that workshops with African and international artists can lead to redraw the links between art and democracy in the region. Exploring co-creation in North Africa should be fruitful investigating the cultural abundance. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm at your disposal to answer any questions. Goodbye.